Welcome my friends, it's the 1st of January 2022. Let's make this a great year <clears throat> in our lives, in our existence, in our work, no matter what will unfold. This clip is in answer to some of your questions based on my previous film document in the medieval square. So we're starting out this year 22 on an astrological note with Mercury direct <coughs> and Venus retrograde for over a month, all in line of Pluto. That's a stunning aspect for the year and it defines the year, therefore. Venus retrograde in line of Pluto talks to us really about re-evaluation and the re-evaluation pertains mainly to alliances, relationships, treaties and resources and debt and money and what is money and exchanges. This is January of 2022. Also within a hundred days we have, as I mentioned, Jupiter in line of Neptune in Pisces. Now Jupiter, as you know, really rules higher law. I'm going to talk about law a lot today, what different kinds of human laws we have, and above all of it is what we know as higher law. And Jupiter is really the teacher of law, of higher law. It rules wisdom, and in short one could say karma. So, <clears throat> my lawyer told me once, about 30 years ago, in Florida, overlooking the waterway, over to Palm Beach, he said, you know, Michael, here's a rule. If you let them, they will. And I laughed at him and I said, yeah, that's kind of what I was taught in uh, war college, in military schools. And he said, but this goes to law. If you let them, they will. So let's start with the secret teachings of all ages. This is a beautiful book, a classic by Manley Hall. I've read it about 30 years ago, I mean studied it, that's a 550 page tome. It discusses all the esoteric teachings that were recorded worldwide. And what is really weird totally weirded me out because this is a new edition of the same book which Manley Hall signed off on in um, 1928. This is a new edition from copyright 2007 by Wilder Productions and I would like to carefully listen to this first sentence. It's a disclaimer. It says <coughs> This book is a product of its time, 1928, and does not reflect the same values as it would if it were written today. Now listen to this sentence. It doesn't reflect the time. So you have a publisher who is blessed to bring out a new edition in 2007 and have a disclaimer in it saying, <clears throat> watch out, if your children read this, you need to first tell them what this is about. Now imagine in 50 years, a new publisher, <clears throat> after I'm no longer here, republishes Light Seeds and puts this disclaimer in it. Really odd. So we're short of the book burning period again. We're in a time really where we're now flagging published books. That's how um, absurd it gets. In my book, Light Seas, by the way, so you know, at the very end, I have about a half a dozen pages that delineate all the planetary alignments for each 1st of January. I just chose the 1st of January as a time marker to track the outer planets year by year. <coughs> so let's go to 2020 and to 22. So Jupiter today in the first degree of Pisces, Saturn 12 Aquarius, Uranus 11 Taurus. That's right there the square that I talked about last time. 
Neptune at 21 Pisces, Pluto 26 Capricorn, now in the alignment, I just said, Mercury, Venus, and Chiron, very important, at 9 Aries. And then it goes on, you can look at the alignments well into 2050, and then I, I also tracked Pluto beyond 2050 and Neptune beyond 2050. So for instance, we see in March 2175, so that's 2175. That's something like 150 years from now, Neptune will be again in Pisces. That's how long the cycle takes. So this book tracks time into the late part of the 22nd century. You know, many people, there's a whole list I could give you, <coughs> such as Jim Mars, Colonel Corso, even Alex Jones when he was young, dark journalist, Catherine Austin Fitz as well, I would like to say hi to. They gave us a lot of updates, so did I by the way, 15 years ago in my book Light Seeds. And the rule of thumb is really, you know, if people do not heed the advice, if they cannot cognitively comprehend what has been said for the last 20 to 40 years, then it looks like people have to experience it, right, and see it for themselves. So, <clears throat> you ask me about this experimental RNA technology that is now in 2022 still ongoing and the medical ethics and the Nuremberg Code. I'd like you to put to the side the Nuremberg Code and we're going to go now into the Geneva Conventions. The Geneva Conventions, plural, is a package of four conventions starting in the 19th century, finished in 1949, right after Nuremberg Code. And it really delineates the laws of war. Thereafter came a series of protocols. There are at least three of them added to the conventions. And one of them is not the same. It's called the Geneva Protocol, and which talks specifically to biological and chemical warfare. <coughs> You know that several independent studies conducted by industrial engineers and scientists have found contaminants which are non-organic and non-water soluble materials that can potentially cause unnecessary suffering. Okay, so this notion of unnecessary suffering is exactly what Geneva Conventions go into. The scientists have discovered a material inside of the experimental RNA technology and which I would describe simply as an allotrope of carbon and it's made of a single layer of atoms and it kind of looks or presents itself, manifests as a honeycomb lattice nanostructure. Right? And the material is ultra expensive. A little square centimeter, that's about that, and it weighs less than one gram, costs $1,500 today. So that makes it about 40 times more expensive than gold. Gold dust, diamond dust, would be cheap compared with this material that they found. One of the scientists said, it's kind of like taking a glass of water and then you go in with a microscope and you find that there are glass particles in it. So, the engineer says, we had in the past what's known as ABC war, right? That's atomic, biological, chemical warfare. And now we're continuing the alphabet in the 21st century and that D, E and P. Digital, electronic, psychological warfare. So, 
you know, there is a question and people say, yeah, the depopulation agenda, 2030, etc. And to some degree, there's some of that. On the other hand, you know that people are alive, right? It's not that like half the planet has died by now. However, when one looks at this material and the quality it has, the material has the quality of a conductor, and it kind of acts like little nano antennas, it can actually create magnetic, electromagnetic fields. The material is so powerful that it creates a field, they say, higher than 10 Tesla. So, when one looks at what's going on nowadays, one gets the impression that the material is in those experimental RNA technologies to kind of connect people to, let's say, some sort of central data bank system or frequencies, you know, electromagnetic frequencies. And the strange part is that <clears throat> a German lady who is a member of the European Parliament, she wanted to know, as to the question of voluntary consent, Nuremberg Code, what is in the agreements that the pharma system signed with all of the governments. So they gave her documents, she held it up, and half of it was blacked out. And she said, you know what, um, is this a joke? What am I supposed to do with this? So she represents German people who elected her into the European Parliament. And we know from the research of an Indian media called Wyon Gravitas, they had ways to investigate and look into these non-disclosure agreements, that essentially the governments handed over to the pharma system their nations in collateral in case they will breach the contract or not fulfill certain clauses the pharma system told them will take over your nation that's everything the people the banks the governments themselves the infrastructure you know military bases all of it you name it so we have two elements right one is a question what is in it I asked the doctor, can you tell me what's in this technology? He said, no, I don't know. I said, well, you know, you should know, otherwise how am I giving consent? And do you think, by the way, children, 5 to 12 years old, can give consent? No. Now, some people say, you know, most of the courts are captive, the judges are bought or blackmailed or threatened or you name it. That's not the case. There are some real judges still around, there are courts that are not kept. If I give you an example, in Spain a high court has ruled the lockdowns unconstitutional. Can you believe it? So the lockdowns that took place were later, after the fact, ruled unconstitutional. This means pretty much everything to do with the technology is also unconstitutional. So that's in answer to Nuremberg Code and the Geneva Convention. In addition, there are constitutions, there are rule of law, <coughs> there are criminal courts, civilian courts, I know there's also military tribunal. So I'm not going to predict which way this whole operation will end, but we know that there are dozens of scientists all over the world who are researching they're putting the stuff under the microscope and they say, look, here it is. And they're saying to other scientists, please refute us, please, please grab some samples, <coughs> analyze them, tell us what you see in it. So after eight months, no one has refuted what I've just said. The next subject that's really important brings us to the issue of supply chain an energy crisis. You know, these two things are completely related and they point to a purposeful and premeditated mismanagement. So what can you do about it? Really get your stuff now, whether it's the medications you need, whether it is the vitamins, the supplements, whatever you need, you need to get it now. 
you need to study <coughs> as a professional whatever your work, your business is, if you're a mechanic, if you are a computer expert, if you're a filmmaker, you need new cameras, new computers. You need to have everything that you need in addition for maybe two to three years in-house stored. Because if your camera breaks and you say, oh, I need to order a new camera, you may wait a year. If your car doesn't work and you want another car, you may wait another year. I have a friend. He has an old Defender, he had to replace an engine, the engine takes a year to come in and so on. So we are in this self-made supply chain energy crisis and we need to think very carefully, go through the list of what we have around us, what do we need every day, professionally for our work, for our jobs, for our projects. Like if you're a builder and you're in construction, um, you need to get the materials in way before you're going to use them. The next point, because we're dealing with a lot of vectors in play, has to do and speaks to the subject of economics, world economy, financial systems. So you've seen Turkey is sort of the signal marker now because Turkey is going basically upside down. So there will be hyperinflation. You will have to think how you save your resources, in what form you save them, etc. I leave that up to you. We're in a phase right now I will call fluid learning. You know, fluid learning means what I knew two months ago and what I know now is already totally different. What I will know two months from now, four months from now in the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is yet another whole story. So we're learning super fast now. This is part of Jupiter. The learning curve goes like this, okay? Steep up. And we need to learn and fast what's going on in the world. However, we must not let it affect us. I told us in the last video how we protect our mind. You understand? We're in asymmetric, unrestricted warfare where almost every aspect of life is at war. There's a war going on, on humanity. A war against humanity, for humanity, a war on humanity. So a few friends have asked me the classic, I mean it's the perennial question, right? They said, okay, so um, who rules the governments? Who, who tells the governments what to do? Who is above them or behind them? And then they say, well, you know, the Davos Club. And then the question, yeah, but who rules the Davos Club, right? Who gives them their orders, marching orders, guidance, whatever. <coughs> this is why we go back to John A. Keel I mentioned a few years ago. His famous book, Trojan Horse. That includes Russia too, right? And I said to them, you understand, there is extraterrestrial technology transfer there is alien interactions, aliens among us here on the planet, in Antarctica, in America, in Russia, in China, wherever. And so there is this interaction between humans and aliens. One cannot deny this. This is a fact of life. And that's been so, by the way, for thousands of years. This is the oldest story of mankind, right? Now, there are some extraterrestrials who work by contact with certain humans who maybe from childhood had this contact. And they work for the better of humanity. Kim Castells and I talked about this when we used our pendulum. And then there are others who misguide humanity, who misguide the governments and who really trick them. You may remember 24 years ago, if you studied it, there was this person, Dr. Anderson, who had defected from an organization that's called ACIO, Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization, which was a part of the NSA, the National Security Agency, that split off, and then within that structure, there was yet another split off, which was called the Labyrinth Group. And the boss of that outfit was simply called 15, Mr. 15. 
And he explained to Anderson and to all the people who worked with him that he didn't trust the Greys. He knew that the Greys were misguiding him. He knew the Greys were trying to trick them to use certain technologies, to do certain things. You know, they will come up to the scientists and say, hey, you, um, we've got a new thing here for you. It's really cool because you'll be able to connect and have all the people under control and you can survey them. It's really cool. And some government said, sounds great, give us this stuff. And this is where we are now, right? So he then said, you know what, I'm not working with these guys. And then he got in contact with a group that he called the Corteum that gave them other technologies, really time travel technology, blank slate technology to make the planet invisible and so on. And they were working on energy technology. I mean, we do know that there exists energy that is still kept hidden, um, which will be totally self-sustained and completely clean, but it's not rolled out yet. That's why I said for right now, the only cleanest energy that is somewhat self-sustained that I would know about are these miniature nuclear plants that the Russians are now deploying in the Arctic. So, to end the circle of this question and answer session, the story is really simple. The narratives of all of the governments is falling apart now in 2022, probably in about 100 days when Jupiter passes Neptune we will see this huge magnification and exaggeration of all of the subjects. And when the narrative falls apart, we'll see what happens next. So, I just want you to see all of this in the context of a game. Let's say a Go game. If you play Go, it's a very interesting game, very different from chess. Or you can use a chess game as an analogy. <laughs> So you have the party who plays the white pieces and the other plays the black pieces. Now let's say there are the two world champions, the best players that are on the planet. They can even beat the computer. Let's say it's Kasparov versus Karpov or Fischer, Magnussen, whoever. They are so good at their game that when the game has proceeded to a certain stage, they both know how much longer it's going to go, and they also both know who is going to lose. So let's say one player looks at the board, he studies it, he looks at the other player, he looks back at the board, and he thinks, you know what, I've lost, I am going to lose. In about 11 or 7 moves, it's checkmate. The other guy, he knows he's winning, he knows. The other guy has lost. Now, if this is a real chess game among players, which is a very mindful game, classic, traditional, there are behavioral rules to it as well. <clears throat> the losing party will basically reach over, congratulate the other guy, get up and say, fine, you won, the game's over. However, in this real-life chess game that we're in right now, the losing party is not going to quit. The losing party is going to extend the game and prolong it as long as it's possible, knowing he has lost. So somebody asked me, well, Michael, how long is this going to take? Is it going to go to the Saturn-Neptune alignment, which is about in 25, 26, as I said, that's four years from now? Or is it perhaps going on for another 20 years? In 2042 and about there, we're going to go into a situation where Uranus in Virgo will be opposite Pluto in Pisces. The alignment is really at its most precise moment. It's a very long phase of five years. Let's say around 2045-46. So imagine we would have to wait them out for another 20 years. I think it's more likely 
that we will see the denouement to start already in 2026 in the Saturn Neptune in Pisces cusp Aries alignment. So, the long and short of the story is we know they have lost, they know they have lost, they know we know that they know they have lost, and yet they move on and do another few moves. And I don't mean to scare you, but the moves are going to get more and more crazy. You know, the guy who loses is going to try everything. In fact, he's going to simply try to take everything down with him. He knows I have lost. And instead of getting up and congratulate, he says, you know what, in this case, I'm going to take the whole shit down, all of it. And that's the danger zone we're in, right? And to end this on a funny note, <laughs> it is really up to you to know what I'm talking about. Because otherwise, you know what, it's going to be like tears in the rain. <laughs> Time to live. It says yes to my secret question. I wish you the best, make the best of this new year. <laughs>